Welcome to the second week of course equipment design mechanical aspects and in this week we will start design of heads and this design of heads we will cover in three different lectures lecture 1 lecture 2 and lecture 3 where in lecture 1 we will discuss different types of heads and its selection in lecture 2 we will speak about procedure to design these heads and in third lecture we will demonstrate a few examples to make you understand how these uh, uh, heads are to how these heads are to be designed okay so let's start with lecture 1 so here we are considering heads as well as closure if we are designing any pressure vessel okay its uh, design or its manufacturing cannot be completed until unless i am not providing uh, I am not covering its openings. For example, if I am considering cylindrical shell that is open from top as well as bottom, so both section I need to cover. So, in what way I can cover that, that comes under the category of heads as well as closers. So, we have different types of heads such as flat plate and formed flat heads. Second, we have is uh, hemispherical heads and then we have ellipsoidal heads, torispherical heads, conical heads. So, these are different types of heads and selection for particular type of head depends on factor like process temperature and pressure, nature of the material to be handled or stored and position of the vessel whether horizontal or vertical and nature of support and above all the economy. So, you see for selection economy is the major criteria and along with this we need to see some other factors as just we have discussed, but primarily we need to focus on economy. Okay? And uh, in subsequent slides I will speak about these uh, heads one by one. So, let us start with flat head. So, flat head if you consider what can be the flat head obviously it is nothing but a flat sheet which is welded over the shell that is simple uh, that is simply a flat head or we can call it flat cover. So, flat covers are generally used for manholes. What is manholes? Uh, when we uh, construct or fabricate any system we provide some windows through this uh, person can enter in the vessel for um, repair purpose or for maintenance purpose. So, that uh, cover through which that person enters into the vessel that is called as manhole. So, that is usually covered by flat plates. Okay? So, flat plates are generally used for manholes in low pressure vessel or to bind any flanged opening. So, what is flanged, flanged opening? For example, if I need to cover any nozzle, uh, that nozzle should be uh, put with a flat plate. So, that flat plate is attached to the nozzle through flange. So, what is that flange? Uh, that we will discuss in a separate lecture in detail. Okay. So, flat head can also be used as closure for a small diameter vessels operating at low pressures. Okay. Now, uh, you, you must have seen that type of covers or that type of heads in our households thing. For example, if we need to store um, uh, wheat flour or uh, rice in a large quantity, we have a very big containers and their uh, containers usually have the and those container usually have flat bottom or flat top cover. Okay. So, that uh, top cover uh, may be removed. So, the, uh, in that case top cover are usually removable, but bottom covers are fixed. Okay. So, that uh, you can imagine as a flat head. So, from fabrication point of view this is the simplest head to construct which is made as just cutting a circular piece from the flat plate. So, when I am having a flat plate and when we cut this, this is simply called as a uh, flat head. Okay. Thus, it is so easy to fabricate or manufacture. Okay. As a result, for particular diameter and operating conditions, material cost for head is maximum. 
ok. You should focus on this that material cost for flat head is maximum, however fabrication cost is minimum, ok. Now why this uh, uh, material cost will be maximum, ok. Now to understand this you should uh, understand what is flat head and what is formed head. If I am considering formed head, formed head means which have uh, slight curvature, ok. And if I am considering flat head, it is welded over the shell. So, wherever it is connected to the shell, there we have sharp edge, ok. And that sharp edge is not available in formed head and therefore, stress distribution is uniform in formed head. However, that is significantly uh, high if I am not having any curved corner which is the case with flat head. Okay. So, when I am having formed head, though stress is distributed uniformly, it can sustain more stress in comparison to flat head. So, if we want to uh, operate with the same uh, stress, if you want to design for same stress, I have to uh, give more strong flat head in comparison to formed head. So, because formed head may work with a small thickness as it is having the curved section and distribution of stress will be uniform that is not available in flat head and therefore, we need to provide more strong head and therefore, we need to provide more thick flat more thick head and therefore, material requirement for flat head will be significantly higher in comparison to formed head. However, its fabrication cost will be very low. So, this is the image where you can see the flat head, it is simply the flat sheet which is welded over the shell, it is simply the flat sheet which is welded over the shell, ok. So, that is the simplest type of heads. Next we have the formed flat head, ok, formed uh, section we have already discussed, ok. So, this is also a type of flat head in which gradual change in shape at the corner results in reduced local stresses. It means when I am having the sharp edge, local stresses will be significantly high in comparison to when I am having curved section. So, uh, when I have to operate a little bit uh, uh, higher or lower pressure than the atmospheric condition, we should choose formed head because it has proper distribution of stress and stress is not localized in this as the case is available with flat head, ok. So, this head is very economical to fabricate and find its widest application in closing the ends of horizontal storage vessels at atmospheric pressure to store liquids having low pressure such as oil and kerosene. So, it is widely used flat head ok and as far as its image is concerned you can see this uh, image where center section is flat however, we have the curved at corners, corners are not very sharp as the case with flat head ok. Another image you can visualize over here that here we have a, a curved section and then we have the flat head. So, this is basically called formed flat heads. Now, next head I am having is more formed than the form flat head and it comes under the category of uh, French shallow dist and French standard dist heads, ok. So, in this category we have all formed uh, heads or all dist heads. Uh, apart from form flat or flat heads, ok. Now, what is the basic difference between formed head and uh, uh, flat head? In formed head or in dished heads, usually we have two radii, first is crown, another is knuckle, ok. So, what is crown and what is knuckle that we can understand through this schematic. If you see here, I am having this dished head, ok, this is the dished section this is the disc section and this is the curve section and from here it is attached to the shell, ok. So, this particular section where uh, radius is R naught or R i for outer as well as inner, ok. So, this particular section we can call as crown and capital R o and capital R i are 
uh, denoted as crown radius and second radius I am having is this knuckle radius where this uh, uh, corners are uh, available. So, this radius is basically called as knuckle radius. So, here that and this can be represented by small r i as well as small r o for outer radius. Okay. So, if crown radius is greater than shell outside diameter, what is the meaning of that? If crown radius it means if r o is greater than the outer diameter of head, okay. usually outer diameter of head as well as shell both are equal. So, r naught if greater than d naught it is known as flange and shallow dist heads. Okay. And if crown radius that is r naught is less than or equal to d naught it is called as flange standard dist heads. So, these are two condition where we have defined a standard as well as shallow dist heads. Okay. And as far as dist head is concerned, we have uh, uh, two types of heads ellipsoidal as well as toryspherical. Okay. I guess you understand what is toryspherical head. Toryspherical head the curved section or we can say the knuckle radius that is prepared as torus okay and torus shape i guess you understand that is if you uh, if you have seen um, a tire tube that is considered as torus in shape okay so that uh, curved section or knuckle section has torus type of uh, uh, design and therefore it is called torospherical head what is the difference in ellipsoidal so, what is then uh, the ellipsoidal head? Ellipsoidal head has more curved part in comparison to toryspherical head because it has a specific major and minor axis which is not available in toryspherical heads. Okay. So, therefore, considering that major as well as minor axis in a particular ratio, ellipsoidal head has more curved part or more formed section in comparison to toryspherical heads. Now, what happens in dist head? Uh, here uh, we will uh, focus on toryspherical head. So, due to a small inside corner because we are considering a small inside corner and therefore, that small corner is available in toryspherical head. So, we are discussing that only. So, due to a small inside corner knuckle radius localized stresses are very high. Okay. So, because it does not have very uh, uniform or very large corner, large uh, corners are uh, quite small and therefore, localized stress are significantly high in such cases. Okay. And if you consider this image here we have this toryspherical shape and if you see this uh, center point, center point is like uh, dist type of structure and corners are sharpened than this crown section. Okay. knuckle are sharpened then this crown section. Okay. So, as this section will be uh, more uh, uh, small it means that uh, if that corner is more, shor more sharp uh, stress localized stress at that particular section will be very high and then that cannot be used to withstand very high pressure. And here you see here I am having uh, one image where the preparation of uh, uh, toryspherical head is shown. If you see this is the dist head or crown radius. Now, what about the knuckle radius? If you see here we have this ball type of structure and here we have another assembly and while revolving this uh, uh, ball around its periphery we can prepare this uh, corner as much uniform as possible. Now, application for toryspherical heads are uh, uh, it is uh, it can withstand more stress in comparison to form flat, but because corners are not very sharp it cannot be used for very high pressure. So, as far as application is concerned these are used to construct vertical process vessel for low pressure or horizontal cylindrical storage vessel for volatile fluid such as naphtha or gasoline. So, this is basically the application of uh, flange standard and shallow dist heads. Now, 
to increase the pressure rating of flange and disc heads local stresses at inside corner of the head must be reduced okay so as i have told that when edge of the uh, when edge of the head is uh, not that much uh, re when edge of the head is uh, sharp it means localized stresses are more on that particular section and therefore it cannot withstand very high pressure so to allow high pressure it has a proper guidelines that what should be the knuckle radius for such heads so as per is 2825 that is the indian standard code inside radius a small ri should preferably be not less than 10% of inside diameter and also inside crown radius should not be greater than outside diameter d not it means ri should not be less than so ri should be greater than or equal to 0.1 di okay and uh, ri should always be less than or equal to d not so these conditions are provided as a guideline for such heads so heads of this type are used for pressure vessel in range 0.1 to 1.5 mega newton per meter square so uh, as far as limitation of torus spherical heads is concerned it is basically up to 1.5 mega newton per meter square or 15 bar is the maximum possible range and beyond that it is observed that it is found that uh, uh, torus spherical heads are not uh, as economical as ellipsoidal heads now we will discuss ellipsoidal or elliptical disc heads okay so these type of heads are generally recommended for pressure vessel designed to operate 1.5 mega newton per meter square as we have discussed in previous slide and further most of the standard ellipsoidal or elliptical disc heads are manufactured on 2 is to 1 ratio of major to minor axis so i hope you are understanding uh, the major and minor axis that we can discuss with this schematic okay this is basically the major axis and this is the minor axis when we transpose this curved section to downward it has the minor axis up to this and here we have the major axis okay so the ratio of these two should be 2 is to 1 now if you see this uh, here uh, when we compare this with torus spherical head in ellipsoidal head we have more uniform corners in comparison to torus spherical heads and therefore it can withstand and because of this it can withstand high pressure in comparison to torus spherical heads so you can see this image to have an idea that uh, how ellipsoidal heads or elliptical head looks like and when we consider torus spherical head it has very sharp corner in comparison to this so it may be like this corner would be very sharp in that case okay and now we have the hemispherical heads hemispherical heads you can consider it is uh, more uniform or more uh, formed in comparison to ellipsoidal heads for a given thickness this type of heads is strongest among the formed heads okay so hemispherical heads are strongest among the formed head like flat formed torus spherical ellipsoidal and whatever we have discussed among this this is the strongest and why it is strongest because it has maximum form section okay so these heads can be used to resist approximately twice the pressure rating of an ellipsoidal disc head of the same thickness and diameter so you can imagine the strength of uh, such heads uh, it can withstand twice pressure in comparison to ellipsoidal heads okay the degree of forming and accompanying cost are higher than for any other commonly used heads okay that is the drawback of a hemispherical head like it though it can withstand twice pressure for the same thickness in comparison to ellipsoid but at the same time this is the costliest head because it has more form section so manufacturing cost of this head is maximum 
okay, but still it is used in many applications. So, this type of head is perhaps the most expensive, but it is widely used in heavy duty high pressure vessels due to the fact that most efficient use of the material is achieved. So, these are most expensive, but uh, at the same time these are used extensively because it has because it can withstand very high pressure. So, you see this is the schematic of hemispherical heads where we have only one radius that is R i or R naught you can understand it does not have a crown section or knuckle section like and this is the image of a hemispherical head. So, when we are preparing such heads its manufacturing cost would be very high. Now, we have conical heads as well as reducers. So, conical head you understand it is basically a cone type of structure. So, conical heads are used as bottom of variety of process equipment like evaporator, spray dryer, crystallizer, settling tank etcetera. So, these conical heads are basically used in different uh, equipment as bottom part ok. Because uh, what happens in uh, for example, if I am having settling tank, settling tank will require continuous removal of solid material which is deposited at the bottom. So, due to having conical structure that solid material is easily directed towards center and then that can be removed and similar the case can be observed in crystallizer. So, these are mostly used as a bottom. Uh, head in comparison to top. In some cases we also use top cover, but mostly these are used as bottom heads. The particular advantage lies in the accumulation and removal of solid for such equipment that we have already discussed. And when the apex angle is more than 60 degree, it is necessary to provide transition knuckle radius. What is the meaning of this? Okay, what is apex angle? when we are considering conical section, uh, when we are considering conical section. So, this particular angle, this angle is basically called as apex angle. As we can see here that these, this is the conical section and here this ang angle is basically uh, apex angle. Okay. When this angle is more than 60 degree, it means it has knuckle radius. Knuckle radius means when it is attached to the shell, okay, so this section will be, will not be very sharp. Otherwise, if for example, if this is the uh, shell, here we can simply attach the uh, conical head. So, here uh, this corners are very sharp. However, if that corner will not be very sharp, this will be like this. Okay. So, here we have the formation of curved section or we can call that as uh, knuckle. So, that is used when the apex angle is more than 60 degree. And cones having apex angle 60 degree are commonly used for removal of solids. Okay. So, in this way we use the conical heads. Like you see in this uh, image, uh, here we have this conical section where this edge is quite uniform, it is not very sharp and therefore it is called as knuckle part of the conical section and this will be used when we have this uh, uh, angle more than 60 degree Celsius. So, in that case um, when it is used at the, uh, so when it is used at the bottom, it is also called as reducer along with conical heads. And here you can see this vessel where the bottom section is conical, so conical head we are using over here. Okay. So, we have discussed different types of heads and the condition. Now, we will summarize that condition to have an idea that in which condition which head should be used. Okay. So, let us discuss that. If I am having flat head, it is used as covers for manholes, channel cover of heat exchanger. So, in this application flat heads are usually used. Form flat head, these are cheapest type of formed head and use is limited to low pressure and a small diameter vessel. So, when we have this condition we can use flat formed heads. 
So, next head uh, I am having is standard torispherical heads or dished head and these are mostly used up to operating pressure of 15 bar or 1.5 mega Newton per meter square. And next head I am having is the ellipsoidal head which is used beyond 15 bar. So, beyond 15 bar we can also use torispherical heads, but that will not be as much economical as ellipsoidal heads. So, beyond 15 bar we usually use ellipsoidal heads. And finally, we have the hemispherical head, this is the strongest shape, accommodate about twice the pressure than that of an ellipsoidal head of same thickness. It has maximum manufacturing cost. So, in this way we can use different types of heads in different condition and here I am stopping lecture 1 of week 2 and we will continue design of heads in lecture 2 as well as in lecture 3 of this week and that is all for now. Thank you.